Hello and welcome back to the entrance of thy words. We've been talking about the word of God and uh, inspiration and preservation for the last few weeks here. And we're going to try to finish that thought either today or next week. Um, we started in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, where the Bible says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. So doctrine is very important. We looked at that a few weeks ago. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So it's very important for us as saved people and obviously for us as uh, preachers and teachers of the Word of God to have some confidence that we have um, an inerrant, infallible, uh, given by inspiration, preserved copy of the scriptures. <clears throat> and um, last time uh, we looked at the fact that all the people in the Word of God didn't question that. Uh, we looked at Paul, we looked at David, we looked at Moses and some others there, and they had um, the utmost confidence that they had God's words. And then we looked at briefly um, some of the, um, uh, not just the people there that knew and were confident that they had the Word of God, but we looked at how in the Old Testament and the New Testament these things were preserved and how God used that and the, the different options there that God has. Uh, God can do it by himself, uh, but he's chosen to use man to do that. And so this book is a combination, and God has, has laid the groundwork here. He's, he's designed this so that the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible, but God has used men to preserve that, copy that. The Holy Spirit has worked through those men. In fact, those men speak, and then sometimes other people uh, dictate. So that's, it's that way with Jeremiah. He dictates, Baruch writes things down, Paul um, dictates, and other men write things down, these letters. So God is, is working it out to make this a type of the Lord Jesus Christ because he's called the Word in John chapter 1. So Jesus Christ is 100% God. He's 100% man. This book is God, the Holy Spirit, and then but he uses man to write these things down. God doesn't force people like Paul or Simon Peter into a place where they have to write in a certain way. They Luke writes like an educated man because that's what he is. He's a doctor. Simon Peter writes like a commercial fisherman because that's who he is. So God has chosen his way to preserve and his way to give these words by inspiration. So the question uh, along these lines, the question always comes up, can a translation be inspired? Well, uh, the obvious answer is yes. And if you read your Bible at all, you know that. Uh, I'll give you a few examples. First of all, in uh, <clears throat> Daniel, in the book of Daniel chapter 5, uh, in Belshazzar's feast, the handwriting comes on the wall. And we read, Mene, Mene, Tikal, Eupharson. And so that's, that's uh, given in a, uh, a Persian type language and then it's translated over and it says um, you're numbered and weighed in the balances and found wanting and your kingdom is divided. So in the original it's given in a certain language and then it's translated. So yes, a translation can be inspired because in the originals it was, it was translated and it was obviously inspired. Um, Nebuchadnezzar, <clears throat> Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, in Daniel chapter 4, uh, gives a decree to all nations and languages and all that. Well, obviously, the, when he gives that, uh, it's, it has to be translated into other languages. So, yes, it's inspired. Um, anytime you pick up a quote from a New Testament writer where he's quoting an Old Testament passage, that's a translation. It's obviously inspired, okay? Uh, no, no question about that. The Lord Jesus Christ comes into the temple in Luke chapter 4 and picks up and starts to read uh, from the role Isaiah. Um, 
those words that he gives there in Luke chapter 4, are they inspired? Yes. Are they a translation? Absolutely. They're a translation. Okay. So yes, that's inspired. Uh, in Acts chapter 2, um, Simon Peter gets up and preaches and that, that uh, comes off in a lot of different languages. Is it inspired? Absolutely, it is inspired. Okay, so um, Moses has uh, multiple conversations with Pharaoh early in the first 11, 12 chapters of the book of Exodus. Moses is raised in the house of Pharaoh, so there's no doubt that when they're conversing back and forth with each other, they're conversing in an Egyptian dialect. But when that's pinned down in Scripture for the first time, it's pinned down in Hebrew. So their very conversations in the original manuscript would have been a translation from Egyptian over into Hebrew. So can a translation be inspired? Yes, it can be inspired. It's very obvious. Now, you take that a step further and you think, well, the word uh, translation or translated or translates, is that found in the Bible? Yes, it is. It's found three times. So first of all, it's found in 2 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10, where the Bible says, to translate the kingdom from the house of Saul and to set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah from Dan even to Beersheba. So in 2 Samuel chapter 3, the Bible is talking about translating the kingdom from the house of Saul over to the house of David. Now, I'm going to ask you, which one is better? Would you rather be under the reign of someone like King Saul, or would you rather be under the rule of someone like King David? King David was obviously a better choice. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10 that he was such a good uh, leader and a good king because he served his generation. Okay, he, he just he, David had that, and he's he's uh, God's king. Okay, uh, other than the Lord Jesus Christ, his son, which David is a type of that. So in this instance, a translation is better. Okay, the second time it shows up, Colossians one thirteen, <coughs> <coughs> who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So as saved people, the Bible says about us, we have been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, are we better after we're translated into that kingdom or were we better before? Again, obvious answer, we're better after. Thirdly, it shows up, this word shows up in Hebrews chapter 11 verse five and it actually shows up two or three times in this one verse. It says, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God was Enoch in better shape after he was translated or before he was translated he was in better shape after he was translated because he was with God so three times this phrase this word or a form of it shows up in your King James Bible and every time it's better after translation. Is God able to preserve and inspire a translation? Yes, he is. Without doubt, he's able to do that. He was able to give his words originally, and he's able to translate it for us in our language. There are no mistakes, no mistakes in this King James Bible. This book will help you no matter what your problems are, no matter what your successes are, no matter what kind of wisdom you need. This book will point you in the right direction. I hope you've enjoyed this. Good day and God bless you.